Here we go, fellas. Time to unwrap the potential players on the move for the 2021 trade deadline day with help from our friends at Upper Deck. I love the visual. I get to pretend I'm a game show host. I come over here. Mike Johnson, get ready, because we're starting with Connor Garland. We've got his card right here. Connor in action, one of the most responsible Yotes over the last couple of years. You always knew what you were getting from Connor Garland. What team would value getting him, Mike Johnson? Any team, Tone. He's that good. I mean, you talked about his offensive consistency. He's been the best offensive player in Arizona the last two years. And the thing is, he's not a UFA. He's an RFA. So you think, well, why would you want to trade a guy like that? who's, you know, contributing, he's in his mid-20s. Well, because he's doing so well, he's been better than Phil Kessel. He's been more productive than Clayton Keller. Guys who make seven, eight million dollars per year, he's going to want to get paid. And I don't blame him. He grinded in the minors for a long time to get the opportunity, then made the most of it. If he deserves a five million dollar year contract because he's on a 60 point pace this year, then go get it, Connor. If that means you don't get it in Arizona, then get on out of there. You don't think the Boston Bruins would like a little offensive uptick? Um, you don't think uh, that the Philadelphia Flyers, if they're thinking along those lines, Pittsburgh Penguins along those like the whole bunch of teams that would appreciate a, a, a boost. And this is from a guy who's playing on a current playoff team anyway. So lots, I'm almost surprised he's available. But if it's about finances and him needing a big contract that he's deserved, then maybe I get it. But I don't blame him one bit for wanting that contract. He's earned it. Doesn't make any sense that your leading scorer, <laughs> who makes the least amount of money possible on your team, would be the guy that's available right now when you're in a playoff race to me, Johnny. But we digress. That's not our point. There would be lots of people that would be interested in this in this player if, in fact, he is available. Now, you can have the last name Lawton and not spell it the way that Brian does. Uh -oh. L-A-U-G-H-T-O-N. I'm talking about Scott Lawton. The Flyers have had their ups and downs. There he is. In his mm. upper deck glory. Brian Lawton, what's your move if you've got him on the roster? What's the decision? Well, first of all, we'll see what happens with Philly. He's often talked about as a prototypical flyer, a guy they drafted and developed. But in terms of trade deadline, they definitely could get value for him. There's a lot of teams that are looking for a guy that can kind of lock down a spot on that third line. I think immediately to the Edmonton Oilers, who have a lot of depth, but I think they need to upgrade that existing depth that they have. And at just uh, around 2.6 million, might be a little less than that, excuse me, 2.3, if my memory serves me correctly. I would bet on that. Yes, I, I believe that's correct. At that cap hit, there's a lot of teams that could still work him in, and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, things don't work out for Philly that he's a guy they consider moving. Johnny, Scott Lawton, your thoughts. Well, I love it. Edmonton, that's where I thought, you know what, a, a guaranteed playoff team, that he'd be a nice fit. And while he is a prototypical flyer, he's also 26 years old and a pending UFA. He's very young to take that status, and Philly hasn't signed him up yet. they got to make changes in Philadelphia. I would expect him to get traded, and I, I think they probably should trade him and start recouping some assets. I like to use a Johnnyism when I speak to Johnny, so here I go, pointing out Ricard Raquel. There's an underlying number here that's very special. He's not a rental in the traditional sense. He has another year on his contract, and it's a very reasonable cap hit. What about Ricard Raquel, Johnny, and how attractive he is come deadline time? Well, Tone, every other year, that makes him more valuable, like an extra year of control. But this year, with the expansion draft looming, that almost makes him less valuable because he's another player you need to protect. And teams have kind of set themselves up managing their contracts and know they're going to protect the 7-3-1 the or the 8-1, and whatever it is. But the fact that he adds another year of contract, you'd have to protect him. He's a really good player. He can play center and wing. He scored goals in bunches previously. I think in a better situation with better players, you can plunk him in on the top six of the Toronto Maple Leafs, and he would look really good there. I just don't know if that extra year in the contract lots – makes them harder to deal because of the expansion draft. Yeah, it's definitely a double-edged sword, Johnny. I mean, this expansion draft is going to take a little bit of a bite out of value of certain players because teams know that it, there's no way they could fit him in. And there's a number of teams that would love to have this guy. Just think about Toronto, 
Colorado, Boston's looking for top six scoring. Who wouldn't mm -hmm. want a guy that's just a couple of years removed from two 30 plus goal seasons and a reasonable cap hit at 3.8? But if you've got to pay a premium to acquire him and you can rest assured, Anaheim will default to, I don't need to trade him. So you've got to make it worthwhile. You've got to go the extra mile. And then that team says, but I'm going to lose him anyhow. I think it's going to be a hard trade to make. So it's going to take a, re a really unique trade partner that believes it yeah. won't cost them another asset or they won't lose him because of the expansion draft. I swear I was yeah. listening to every word you said, Good. but I got a Victor Arvidsson. There was not a nicer, more professional guy at the Stanley Cup final. This guy, and he is, and I want to say this the most tactful way I can, he's not the biggest guy. So when you're around him, it makes you believe <laughs> I can do anything because Victor Arvidsson can do it. Nice. We're going to be right back. I'm going right, to check out my cards. Take these away. There's Leon Dreisaitl, there's a winner, winner chicken dinner. You got a Dreisaitl? Oh, yeah. Nice. I like to go right to see what the rookie cards are in here. Oh, yeah. I got a Bowen Byron the other day. That was amazing. Nice. Unwrap is presented by Upper Deck. UpperDeckEPack.com lets you buy, open, and collect your favorite hockey cards from anywhere at any time. Get a free pack every day just for logging on. Visit UpperDeckEPAC.com today.